Hey everyone, welcome back. So today's video we're going to be talking about relative atomic masses and isotopes. It's an important topic because it's a part of the new chemistry syllabus. So let's see what is isotopes. Imagine three different atoms, all of them having the same number of protons inside their nuclei, which is seven. So I'm writing seven as a subscript on these nitrogen atoms because they have the same number of protons and they also have the same number of electrons so their configuration is also the same. The red dot represents the proton inside the nuclei while the orange dot represents the electron. But now if you see these diagrams they have different number of neutrons inside the nuclei. If you pause the video for a moment and count you would see first one has seven neutrons, the second one has eight neutrons, and the third one has nine neutrons. If you try to count their atomic masses, which is the sum of proton and neutron, the first one has atomic mass of 14, the second one has atomic mass of 15, and the third one has an atomic mass of 16 units. So they have the same atomic number, but apparently their atomic mass is not the same. Isotopes are the ones which have the same atomic number but different atomic masses. So they have the same value of Z which is the atomic number but different atomic masses because protons are same but their neutrons are different in number. So they are atoms of the same element because atomic number is the main identification of them. So they have the same atomic number, but their neutrons are different. Now imagine these two isotopes of nitrogen with the same electronic configuration. They all can make three single bonds with hydrogen atoms. They all can make ammonia molecule. But now when you count the masses, the mass of first ammonia molecule is 17 units but the second one has 18 units because the second nitrogen, the nitrogen in the second diagram has a mass of 15 units. So isotopes have the same atomic number, they have the same proton number. Their electronic configuration is also the same. The number of electrons in the first shell, second shell will also be the same because the total number of electrons is also the same. Their chemical properties are same because again their configuration is same. Same number of electrons in the outer shell means their valency and it is also the same among isotopes. But the only thing different in isotopes is their masses because of the neutron number. Now let's talk about relative atomic masses which is also known as AR. A means atomic mass and small r means relative value. Now we have three different isotopes of nitrogen again. One with the mass of 14, one with 15 and one with 16. If we analyze the nitrogen samples in nature, we get to know that the nitrogen with mass 14 is 80% present in the universe. The one with 15 mass is only 5% and the one with 16 units of mass, this nitrogen is present 15% inside the environment. So there's a formula to find the relative value as an average of them. The formula is percentage of these isotopes multiplied by their own atomic mass divided by the total percentage. In our case, 80% of 14 unit mass nitrogen plus 5% of the 15 unit mass nitrogen. So 5 was the abundance of that nitrogen and 15 was its mass plus 15% times 16 units of mass. This whole value is added, it's summed up and then it is divided by the total sum of the percentage of nitrogen isotopes. So 80 plus 5 plus 15 is again 100. Percentages are normally obviously added to 100, but we don't risk. Sometimes there are unknown samples, so we just leave it and we add whatever percentages are given to us. We divide it by 100 and then we get to know the relative atomic mass of nitrogen. 
which is 14.35 units. So this is the relative atomic mass of nitrogen. Let's study another example. We have two chlorine isotopes, both with the atomic number of 17, but their atomic masses are different and their abundance in nature is also different. The one with 35 units of mass is 75% abundant, but the one with 37 units of mass is only 25% abundant. We use the same formula, which is percentage times the atomic mass, the sum of those and then divided by the total percentage. For chlorine's relative atomic mass, the first mass has 75% abundance times 35 plus 25% abundance times 37 units of mass. The sum of those should be divided by the total percentage, which is 75 plus 25. We get to know it as 35.5. If we start writing two decimal places, it would have been 35.45. It doesn't mean that chlorine has half a neutron. The 0.5 represents the relative atomic mass, which is kind of an average. Now let's try a practice question to see if we are getting the idea and if we would be able to solve more problematic questions. So let's try. An element X has relative atomic mass of 42.37 units. It has two isotopes. So the isotopes are X42 and X43. So the question is asking us to find the relative percentages of the both isotopes. Now we have the relative one, but we don't have the percentages. So let's see if we will be able to solve such a question. We know that the sum of these percentages should be 100. So one equation is ready with us that the percentage of x42 plus the percentage of x43 should be 100. Let's say, let's say for a moment, we just make x43 as the subject of the equation. So it becomes percentage x43 is equals to 100 minus percentage of x42. We call it equation one. Now coming back, we know the formula is percentage of x42 times 42 mass plus percentage of x43 times 43, which is the 43 units of mass divided by 100 because in this case we have only two isotopes. Now we know that 42.37 should be placed in place of the relative atomic mass. 42 times the percentage of x42 remains the same, but in the place of x43 percentage, we write from equation one, 100 minus x42 times 43. We just substitute it. Now, we just send the 100 on the left side for multiplication and we get 4237 is equals to percentage of x42 times 42 plus we solve it further we get 4300 because 43 times 100 then minus 43 times the percentage of x42. Now we can solve it even further. We know there are two variables which is percentage x42. We just subtract them and we get to know it becomes minus one percentage of x42. So we have it over here and then we have plus 4300. When we solve it, Further, 4,237 is equals to minus percentage of x42 plus 4,300. Now, in order to solve this equation for the percentage of x42, which I am just writing as x, x becomes is equals to x becomes equals to 4,237 gets subtracted from 4,300. Now, the answer becomes very simple for us, which is just the subtraction. Let me do it. 4300 minus 4237. And the answer comes to be 6, 
So this is the percentage of x42. And just we call it equation A. Now we know that the percentage of x43 should be 100 minus this value. So we just do the same thing. We, we subtract this percentage from 100 and the answer becomes 37. So I hope that we can solve such questions in like further examples and we'll be able to get it. In the coming video, we'll solve some past paper questions from A levels as well to get a stronger grip. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.